So uh, with us here tonight, we do have Lisa Sylvester, uh, who is with LexisNexis AU. We have Tia, Tia Friedland with Westlaw AU, and then Joanna Fear, who is with the Federal Court Library based here in Brisbane in Queensland. So the way that we hope to run the evening is that we will have each of these speakers explain um, a lot about their systems, really. So we're going to start with, with Lisa. Then at the end of her presentation, we'll take a short break, so just a, a couple of minutes or so, and then we'll swap over our end to get into the next system, which will then be sort of Westlaw. And at the end of Tia's presentation, we'll take another short break and do a swap across to Joanna's presentation. So instead of having uh, one break in the middle this time, we're going to have sort of like three different sections, just so you can plan ahead with anything that you need to manage at home with things in the oven or whatever it might be. <laughs> so uh, let me just introduce Lisa and then we'll do a, a chair swap so that she can come and sit in this seat. Um, Lisa is post sales manager at LexisNexis Pacific, and she's also a lecturer with the School of Law and Justice at the University of Southern Queensland, and indeed was national president of ALA 2012-2013, um, and she's been closely connected with this course over the years, and has, yes, yes the face-to-face -face version as well as through the, the online version. So it's great to welcome Lisa back to the fold, and I will swap across and just get her screen up first. So bear with us while we just stop sharing screen and then reshare again. Where is it? No, no, don't try, 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 I'm so just using the one. Yeah, yeah so zoom, share screen. Well, just as a reminder to the students in the room, you may need to escape out of full screen mode when Jill starts this share. Okay, Lisa is taking over to dance. <laughs> right, hello and welcome. Now, uh, with LexisNexis, uh, some people may know it as Butterworth. So if you ever see the name Butterworth floating around on any of the old books on the shelves or anywhere at all, then that was what LexisNexis was previously known as in Australia for over 100 years. And then they decided globally to be called LexisNexis. So you might, might find that some people still know and love us as Butterworths, but our people know us now as LexisNexis. In terms of the, the website, the, the website that I've gone to is the one that we call LexisNexis AU. It's the one that the university is currently using. We do have another one, which in practice you may come across, which is called Lexis Advance. I won't take you through that because I know you, you need to use the one for your assessment purposes that I'm going to go through today. <laughs> and down the path, when you need to know more, then come back to our training consultants or learning consultants to find out more about the differences with Advance. The main thing with the case content with Advance that's different is um, the graphical interface that you see with the case content. It's absolutely amazing and really easy to view compared to this version and will make life a lot easier for you once you need to do that type of research. So th the first thing I wanted to take you through to begin with is um, how this looks and feels when you go in via what we call the home page. So the home page comes up with a quick find area, which is on the left hand side for the quick things that people want to do where they just go in, do something and get out. So that's the reason why they've got the quick find options. The my favorites can be set up depending on where you are to be the favorites you'll use frequently and then you can choose to browse them or search them. So this is a common sort of view that people get. What you might also get though is that sometimes they connect you straight into a service. So if you find that you're into something like the Australian Law Reports and it jumps you straight into this type of view, this is what they would call the table of contents view. So see at the top it's got view table of contents. So it may look a little bit different and you might think that doesn't look like what Lisa showed me. Now why is it looking different? And there is a system of things called deep links that people do in their catalogues that will link them straight into something like this table of contents just so they don't have to look around for the source or you know, where is it, you know, where's the Australian Law Reports. So if you find that you come via here, then you know that you're in the table of contents, you're in that service of Australian Law Reports and away you go. Otherwise, if you're in what we call the home page, then that's that view that I started off with, with the quick find options and the favourites, etc. 
So with the, the case content, the main tool that most people use within LexisNexis is called CaseBase. Now, CaseBase started off many, many years ago in Queensland, of all places. Yay, I'm in Queensland. <laughs> it's good to have a Queensland initiative sometimes, uh, called Pink Ribbon. So just to give you some background, and Pink Ribbon went off to the University of Queensland, did a bit of a barter deal, and looked at the case content that was coming out, the journal content coming out, and analysed them and put them into a digest. So what case space covers may not be that um, clear uh, from looking at the website. So what you may want to do is go into the help file, which is up the top right hand corner, just to see the coverage of what does case space cover and go into the A to C bit where it says about. So with the about case space, if you're thinking, well, why should I even use this? What, what um, are the years that it's covering? What's the particular report said or unreported judgments, etc.? Then here's all your answers all in one hit. So it's all in that one screen. Uh, what you'll find is also very popular is the abbreviations, because whenever you get something and you're not sure what they mean, then you can come into this about case space, going into the scope and coverage and see all the abbreviations. So when someone says, um, I want to get an ACLC, you might think, what on earth is an ACLC? Then at least you can see that it's out of the Australian company or cases content that they're looking for, and then you can go and find your source from, from there. So it's got dual purposes, you know, rather than just using it for the content of case space. Then there's a system which we call signals, which is really confusing, and I don't expect you to understand it within two seconds tonight. <laughs> Um, but they're very useful because when you find a case, if you find that it's got this little signal beside it in case space, then it is a problem to give it over potentially within a court environment. The, the reason why I say that is it means that since that case is heard, it's had something reverse it, disapprove of it or overrule it. So if you're doing research for someone else and handing over this case and you see that it's got that negative signal, you should advise them of that. Otherwise, they may want to go and cite that in their submissions to court and the court will, will question why. You know, why have you actually given me this case because it's been disapproved or overruled and they'll want to see what's happened with the, the case since. So um, have a look for the signals. They can really help a lot. Where it's got the positive one, when you see that, that's really important to find out whether it is a good case that has actually been cited subsequently. So has it been approved? Has it been followed? Has it been affirmed? Which means that other cases have looked at the content of the judgment and agreed with it to some extent. So they've applied the principles coming out of that case or affirmed them, followed them, etc. So when you see the green signal against a case and you're wondering, is this a good case? Is it something that someone will follow again or find of interest? Then the green signal is a better one in our system. Uh, the red one is not so good and you may need to do further research to find out why. So why, why have they come up with that? So I'll go in and actually show you some of the cases and these signals and how it actually um, comes up with them. But in terms of what the coverage is, the signals come from looking at all these cases that come through, analysing them and putting them into case space. Then having a look at the case itself to see, did it actually cite another decision? If it did, what did they do with it? Did they approve that decision? Did they affirm it? Did they just merely cite it? Did they um, consider it? Um, so it goes through all this coverage and then reports that within the citations that are put into case space. Okay, um, what we also do with case space is we subject classify things. So when you see these subject classifications, they are fairly similar to what the courts will use now within what they call ca uh, catchwords. So when they're developing their judgment and they have to write up the top of it with the catchwords, a lot of this is very similar to what the courts will use. Some of it does differ when you go branching down to the sub components because it may not just be all about bailment there may be a subcomponent of bailment that they've really dealt with or the, the worst one is a lovely area called contract uh, where contract could be really anything <laughs> so yes you will have the top level of the subject matter so if you're looking for cases on a subject but you also have other components of was it a breach of contract do they have a rescission did they do specific performance so there may be other components of the contract law that they've dealt with so that's all in help, strangely enough. And to get to that, again, if you need to, once you come into LexisNexis AU, just go over to help and then click on that. And within help, where I went to was under C, 
and under C, you've got the scope and coverage of case space, etc. Now, the, the help also does give you a lot of other things. So it will show you how to browse, how to search, what the lovely thing called Boolean searching is all about, all these things called connectors and commands and stuff. Um, I'll try and simplify it in the time I have with you, but if you need to review it further, then you can come in and look at the help from here. There's also some knowledge base um, videos, which I'll show you at the end of where to find them, which are just snippets to remind you of what all this is all about. Okay, so in doing a search, the things to consider is, first of all, what does a case look like when you're trying to do a search for one? So let me open up a case. I'm just going to pick the lovely ALRs, Australian Law Reports. And what's of interest? Queensland Sugar. Let's have a look and see what they're up to. Okay, so when you're looking at the case content itself, so this is the, the full case that's been reported in the Australian Law Reports, what you'll find with the uh, LexisNexis AU system is you'll find the case extracted out on the screen that you see there that I've got that I just scrolled up and down. It also has up the top there a little PDF um, image. When you click on that, that's what we call the, the case report out of the um, hard copy. Um, and out of the hard copy, you'll find it does look a little bit different because it comes up. Am I sharing? I'm not sharing. Um, it's blacked out. Okay. It got the text without. see if I can share um, this other option. Okay. Okay. So this other option, where I got it from, was at the top of the case. It had a little PDF icon, I clicked on that, and it then shows me what the print edition would have. Where this could be really useful with the older uh, reports is being able to identify exactly where in the, in the judgment something's been mentioned. So it gives you a page number, so it's quite clearly showing a page number at the top there, and the uh, line numbers or paragraphs. So when I'm trying to say to um, the court, if I go down further, and I'm not quite sure where am I on this case. I'm at page 73, and you can see the different line numbers or paragraph numbers, etc. As, you, as you go down. So I see it's got paragraph five there, or line five, and there'll be line six, seven, eight, getting down to 10. Then what they decide to do after 98, I'm looking at Joanna, just making sure I've got the right year, because I sometimes get a mental blank. In 98, they started doing medium neutral citation formats. So then you get this lovely paragraph number as well. So in reported decisions, sometimes you get these line numbers. Sometimes you also get the paragraph numbers. And that just identifies for the person that's reviewing the case where you're telling them to look. So you're saying, look at this particular page at paragraph 7, and it states blah, um, just so that they know exactly where to look. So what I'll do is I'll go back to the other screen. So within here, this is the, the case. And when you look through the case, it's got the, the judge. So sometimes people are saying, I know there's a case, judge such and such was involved. I can't remember the case name, don't know the year, but I know a judge was involved. Um, so you may get that and then that's all you've got and you may need to research that. There's also in the top part there that's bolded the thing called catchwords. So the catchwords is the main things that this case dealt with. Where it's um, different uh, for researching is sometimes people will do the general research across everything and not necessarily pinpoint it in catchwords. You may find that the case isn't then as relevant. So just be wary of using catchwords. When you go down through the top part of the case, if there's uh, legislation that's also cited, then sometimes you'll find it at the top. This one doesn't have it at the top except for where it's got, it was an application under this particular section of this Act. So that's then telling me that that's what they dealt with with respect to this case. So just going back out of all of this now, there's a case and how do I find something like this is then the challenge. So if I go back to the start, if I knew the case name, that could be quite straightforward. I can just type it in and away we go. So I'll type in a general one that I use quite regularly, which is Cadelpha. And if you stumble around with the spelling, 
saying, it's not too bad with LexisNexis AU because it's got this word wheel that comes up, which gives you some prompting. So I can then look through this and go, okay, that's actually the case I'm after. I couldn't remember the second party. I can now click on that and then go and find the case from that point. Okay. Uh, we'll go. It's um, thinking. Uh, okay, don't okay, can you see my screen now with the Cadelpha case? Yes, can. okay, good. Okay, with the Cadelpha case, what it's done is it's gone straight in to show me the case space record. So the case space record looks like this. What we do is we put all of the different citations of where you're going to locate the case. They call those parallel citations. Now, some people like getting all of them given to them when you're doing research, um, but I would recommend possibly not. Um, what you would want to do is give them what are the reported decision citations first up. Um, if within this it doesn't allow you to get to it because within LexisNexis we can't um, link you over to the Commonwealth Law Reports because we don't have the rights to do that, but TIA will take you through that with Westlaw. Uh, but you do have the Australian Law Reports and where you see this strange thing called a BC number, that's an unreported judgment. So you can go over and look at the unreported judgments. But the courts don't like that as a citation. So if you're handing it up in court, don't, don't use that. It would be better to use the um, high court one, so where it's got the HCA one, or the reported judgments ones. So the reported decisions in the practice direction from the courts is usually what they have to have for court purposes. When you go down and you look at the catchwords, that's something that you can limit your search to. So you're then going to find cases just on that. And then it gives you a summary. So catch, um, case base is a case citator. So it gives you the citations for the decision, but also a summary of what, what it was all about. So you don't have to read through the whole thing, which is probably the best thing that most people like it for. <laughs> I don't read through this whole case. So at least we've got the summary there for you. With the cases referring, this is where I was suggesting that when cases get heard, they then look at other decisions to work out whether or not they're going to follow the, the precedent that's been set by other judges. So the judges will say, this is what I think about this law and this is what we're going to do with this issue in my court. And if that is in a court that you're appearing in, then they probably have to stick with it because it's very difficult to go around the issue of what they call precedent. So within these ones, these are other decisions. When I scroll down a little bit, because it's scrolling a little bit too fast. Ooh. Okay, go back up a little bit. It shows you then all the cases that have referred to this decision since it was heard. So when Cadelpha was heard, that was back in 82. And since it was heard, these are all the cases that have dealt with it some way. So within this one, it cited the decision, cited and cited. So we've got the way that it actually dealt with it considered. Now, if you're not sure what they all mean, then if you go to the help file that I was in before, it actually explains what considered means, what does applied mean, what decided mean. If I was wondering, is there a case within the court that I'm, I'm needing to use this in, then you can limit it to just the court. So it does have this filter to say, Cadelpha is a case that I'm interested in. Someone's asked me to find all cases that have dealt with Cadelpha in a certain court then I can filter by these options. So these are the treatment options that I was talking through before, and then the court annotation options. So I can say, show me the courts, and it does a, a bit of a, an alphabetical listing. And then I can see the ones with the AATA and ACT, and then see all those cases that have dealt with it. That, that can be quite um, an important tool when people know and love a particular case and they just want to find other like decisions or other cases that have dealt with it. Where you want to find something that's really similar to that case, then what I recommend doing with this case is referring to it is filtering by the positive case treatment. The positive cases are those where the court said, yes, I approve of the principles that came out of Cadelpha's decision and I'm going to apply them or I'm going to follow them, I'm going to co consider them. So these ones will be similar in principle to the Cadelpha decision. So it's a quick way of filtering through possibly hundreds of cases and finding those that are very similar in principle. So in looking at all those though, there were some that were negative or those that were cautionary 
And when you look at those, they distinguish principles or they question them, etc. And that's why we've got that little signal. So the signals that I was talking about that are cautionary treatments. So potentially if you're appearing in that court, so if you're going and finding uh, something for the Federal Court of Australia and um, you're thinking, is this case going to be questioned within this court? Are they going to be um, bound by it? Then you may be able to see how it's been looked at in recent decisions. So has it been distinguished, questioned, um, all that sort of stuff. So that's a bit of a nutshell view of, of that. What I find most people actually use case base for, though, is going over, rather than this quick find, into the cases area or where it's got this legislation by title, looking at what they call the judicial consideration of the legislation. So if you like this quick find, which I think is, is pretty good for this type of search, then you can come to here. And if you thought, well, I'm looking for cases that have dealt with the Corporations Act, and see it's prompting me as well. So I don't have to remember the whole thing. I can go, yes, that's what I'm after. I'll click on that. And then just type in the provision number that you're after. So 180 is a popular one. And then I'm looking for judicial consideration. So judges that have looked at the legislation and given some opinion about how that legislation should be interpreted, and it's in the cases. So I'm looking at judicial considerations of cases. So I can find, and then it will come up with quite a few. Uh, where I can filter through by the court if necessary. So I can look at the highest court to see what's the most prominent case. I can look at the most recent. So there's the judgment dates. And I can filter on the left-hand side if I like by reverse chronological, relevance, jurisdiction. So whatever you're wanting to filter by, you don't have to go through the whole lot. So 341 is a lot. Um, so you may want to filter it a bit. When you go into any of those, the, it will show you where you are. So we're in case-based cases if I click on and have a look. If it comes out of other content like the case reports, then you'll see that it's out of the Australian law reports, etc. Now see how it came up then? It jumped down to this table. So it's got the legislation title, the section number, and then it's given me that detail. So that's what I was looking for. And this Bywater decision considered that particular principle. So I looked at the 180. I can then scroll on back or it's got back to top as a quick click back up and then see some more details, click through to have a look at the decision where I've got links and away I go. So the search that I did then was from the home page. I went to where it's got legislation by title, typed in the name of the legislation, switched this over from acts over to judicial consideration because I'm looking for cases. So having considered this section and typed in the section that I was after. Now, another option, just to give you further, the extra steak knife option, is we go into cases. So the cases search form has been set up just for case content. So what we tried to do with this is give you an option where you can still go back and look at the case by its name. You can go with the judicial consideration of legislation. Or one that I find really, really helpful is this catchword summary area. So that will highlight cases that have dealt with that particular area in a lot more detail. So if I put in contract um, and breach, then that will find cases that have dealt with the issues of contract and breach. Now, the reason why I've got and there is the way that this um, website works in the LexisNexis AU world compared to the newer version of Advance is you need to put connectors in between your words or your terms, otherwise it treats it as a phrase. So that's an important thing in using this because some people won't put connectors in between the terms and will come back with nothing. So on this website, make sure you put a connector. If in doubt, put the and, but it can be a really long document. So if you don't think that that's coming up with the right results, there are the connectors, which I'll just show you where they're quickly located on here. So it's got use connectors and you can go to search tips, but if you can squint a bit, it's got this W slash P. So W slash P is within paragraph. So you may want to limit your search to say, look for contract in the same paragraph as breach, just to try and narrow it down a bit so it's not going to be all over the place. The other thing you may want to consider is, is it breach? Is it breaches, breached ED? And then you can use a truncation thing on this website, which is an exclamation point. 
on our later one, we do have an asterisk now, just to make it more consistent. Yay, everyone likes that. Um, but on this one, just to give you <laughs> a difference of opinion of why we won with this one, yes, you do have to put an exclamation point. If in doubt and you forget all of it, just have a look for the search tips and it will give you what you can do on this website compared to our later version of Advance. Now, in running that, I can limit my search because someone might say, well, I know it's a contract case. It's about breach. And I know it was somewhere within the last year. Um, it was probably out of the Commonwealth jurisdiction. And let's go into something like the federal court. Now, if they even remember the judge's name, you can even put that in there. Or even parties um, were represented by a certain law firm or a particular barrister was involved, then that can also help sometimes because they may remember that detail. And then we can go and search. Okay, so it then comes back showing the case content that was found. Now, with the way that it's presented on this website, it may show you the same case a number of times because on the right there where it's got source, it's bringing that um, digest of the case. So if you don't want to read through the whole thing, you can look at the case-based digest record, but it's also presenting you with the unreported judgment in full. So you've got both options. So depending on what you want to go into, you just click on the link and, and off you go. Um, sometimes it can even get to five or six entries, just depending on how popular the case was and how many report sets it all went into. Within um, the newer system of advance, we rolled it all into one record. So when you get the results in advance, instead of it being split like that, you'll find it all ro rolled up into one. So that, that will just present differently if you get onto that one. But we can go in and see SAI, SAI Global. <laughs> so they're a competitor. <laughs> look at a competitor <laughs> um, and they were oh, breaching your obligations on a corporation set okay um, perhaps not a good idea to show you so um, but anyway let's have a look and we've got the case that we can go into or we can have a look at intellectual property copyright infringement that's all stuff that you'll be dealing with all the time in library um, dealing with copyright and intellectual property stuff and it just gives a understanding of what happened within that um, so the copy computer files and the respondent breached an employment contract. So I may not have wanted something about employment and then I can go back and refine my search and, and put a not employment if I want to or I can refine it further to uh, specific things um, that may make a bit more sense. Um, just trying to think of what else might we need to go through. If um, you're wondering how to locate the most recent cases that's coming out and you're not quite sure where to look for those, there is a thing called a latest cases notifier and that's something that can be emailed to you and then you can look at that as it comes in each day to see if the cases are of relevance and let people know. Uh, when I was knowledge manager for a law firm, I looked at that all the time to see if there's any relevant cases that I needed to let the, the practitioners know about. So the cases notifier is a good one for that. Um, and there is a thing called Legal Express, which also helps um, pinpoint things by subject matter for case content so you can see what's going on by a particular case. Now, um, in terms of help, because you might think, well, yes, I've got a little bit of that, but where can I go to get more? Then there is a website. And feel free to ask any questions via chat while I'm doing this as well. So I've gone to lexisnexis.com.au. It will tell you the latest thing that we have on sale at the moment, but I'll just click off that. Um, there's an area called support, support and training. And we have things like public webinars. So if you want to book into that, it doesn't cost a thing. You can just register and attend anything that you think is of relevance to what you're wanting to learn about. Uh, what we've got in terms of the content you'll see advertised when you hover over something. So if you're looking for how to deal with practical guidance or uh, we had one today on case space, I think. Yeah, so it was covering case space in, in more detail. So that's under the public webinars. The other thing that we've done is our learning resources pages, which is under legal for the particular website. So you'll see LexisNexis AU is the one that we went through just now. There's Lexis Advance is another one. And when you go in and click on that, then we give you the videos, podcasts, guides, uh, and click through the webinars if you need to register. So probably the, the last thing, because I think I've probably got a couple of minutes left, mm -hmm. is that sometimes doing case searches like that can bring up random stuff. 
uh, what I prefer to direct people to in the first instance is a thing called an encyclopedia. Um, which is great for all sorts of things, but this particular legal encyclopedia that we produce is called Horsbury's Laws of Australia. So if you're trying to find a case that's really highly relevant on a particular topic, then what I'd recommend doing is going into something like Horsbury's Laws of Australia. You can do a browse if you like, because I find it um, just as effective to browse this particular title. And then you can open up a particular subject area. So if I was looking at something like the um, contract, I can just expand it open, look at um, terms and parties, tell me all about terms and parties and about express terms. And then when you go into that, you'll then see when was this um, reviewed last? So that was when it was last reviewed in terms of the legislation it's referring you to or the case content that it's referring you to. And then when you go down into the footnotes, you'll see some different cases appear. So there's this Roberts and Hong Kong Bank and it's referenced within the commentary there about what is a puff. So if you've ever wondered what puffery is, all that stuff that people say is fantastic about their product, um, then a puff is, there you go, it's telling you what the puff is, and then also what cases are relevance to that issue. That helps a lot because if you did a search on puff, promotional puff, you know, you could end up with heaps of things. <laughs> so at least within uh, Horsby's Laws of Australia, it's saying, here's what it means, here's a case that's relevant to this particular issue, and then you can go and grab that case. I find that pinpoints things a lot clearer and a lot better. Uh, what you can do is, if it's also in case space, and this one doesn't have a signal, but that one does, see the little signal, I can click to get into case space from there, and then we can go off have a look at what it says in case space about it, any publications that's talked about it, other cases that's dealt with it. So if you're trying to pinpoint something on an area of law and you're not sure where to start, then Hallsbury's is a really good starting spot. Um, Tia obviously mentioned what she has with Westlaw, um, but I think that's a good launching spot um, to take you through as well to help you find the cases that's most relevant rather than just the random stuff. The other things that you may want to look at if you've got access to them is the specialised services. So the things in the commentary area, when you go into that with LexisNexis, and what they consider in that is what the services, I'll just um, find one to show. Uh, let's go across on evidence. So with the evidence legislation, if someone said within this particular chapter, a burden of proof Tell me all the cases that are relevant to defining what that is. So what, what is it? And then when you go into this service, so this is a specialised service that's written by the authors that we, we get to write for us. They've talked about the area, so they've given you an analysis of the area, and they've also pinpointed again the cases of relevance for you. So these are the um, secondary sources that you may have been told about uh, where they look at the the primary sources like the legislation and cases, but they discuss it and then they give you their analysis of what it all means. The good thing with these services is they usually are updated more frequently than anything else. So if you want the most relevant cases, the ones that they've just reviewed, then they're the better ones to have a look at. Okay, have I done everything I was meant to cover? And do we have any questions? No questions. Okay. Yeah, just give them a few couple of minutes. If there is anything <laughs> that you'd like clarified uh, or anything like that, please ask. So the, the three points with case research is you can use a case digest or case citator. The one that LexisNexis produce is case base. You can do a quick search using the quick find if you know the name or the citation of it, or you can search by the legislation that was considered, like judicially considered. You can go into the search form, so you can go into the cases search form, just minimising it just to case content and utilising things like that catchwords area of the decision or legislation judicially considered from there. You can type in whatever you like in the search terms, but keep in mind these connectors. So it's an important thing with LexisNexis is the connectors. Otherwise, if you just type in breach of contract, it will have to find it as that. So it has to find it as that phrase as you've typed it. Then if you want to find more detail within something like the legal encyclopedia, then that's called Hall's Resource of Australia. And I think browsing sometimes is the best way of reviewing Hall's Resource of Australia. 
or there's all these other specialised services like that cross on evidence, civil procedure, which are written um, about that particular subject area and that can help you um, understand it a bit better because they explain it and also cover the most relevant cases. No questions. Thank you very much for having me here. So comprehensive. And I will get out of all of this stuff, but keep in mind the um, support and training as well and you can go into that knowledge network area and ask away. Uh, so let me go back to the PowerPoint. Yep. Am I going back to PowerPoint? Yep. Yep. And just don't want to see yeah, me. Just, just leave it Let's, for a minute. No, just leave it oh, for a minute. you want to see me? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, <I'll get> off. <laughs> Thank you. Just put that one up again. Thank you, Lisa, very much indeed. Um, that was fast and furious. <laughs> she knows her stuff, obviously. That definitely shows years and years of experience there. So um, we are recording. We're hoping the recordings are going to work, obviously. But I would recommend that you take some time during the week to sort of go through it again um, more slowly and then sort of be able to have LexisNexis open at the same time so that you can... Um, be able to actually do your own hands-on and, and sort of maybe emulate, copy what's going through and then test that out with the, the queries that you've got would be a good way to go. Still no questions? You're all nice and quiet. Just <laughs> blown away by, <laughs> by the science. Um, so at that note, uh, Tia is going to be next up. So we'll just take a short break.